Pick up any major newspaper or turn on any network television news broadcast. The political orientation won't matter. It could be Fox or MSNBC, The Washington Post or The Washington Times. You'll find virtually every story checks certain boxes. Call them the Ten Rules of Hate. After generations of doing the opposite, when unity and conformity were more profitable, now the primary product the news media sells is division. We also sell content that's just plain stupid, what that TV producer friend of mine calls the isn't-this-weird effect. But the easiest media product to make is called this bad thing that just happened is someone else's fault. It has a virtually limitless market. I know this because I've created a lot of that content. Over the years, I became increasingly uneasy about feeding readers' hate reflexes. I tried to get around this by only picking stories about things that were genuinely outrageous, but eventually you start to feel the tail wagging the dog. In recent years, I started to hear from other reporters who'd begun doing the same thing. You'll hear from some of them below. The problem we all have is the commercial structure of the business. To make money, we've had to train audiences to consume news in a certain way. We need you anxious, pre-pissed, addicted to conflict. Moreover, we need you to bring a series of assumptions every time you open a paper or turn on your phone, TV, or car radio. Without them, most of what we produce will seem illogical and offensive. The trick is to constantly narrow your mental horizons and keep you geeked up on impotent anger. It's a twist on manufacturing consent's description of an artificially narrowed debate. The Herman Chomsky thesis in the mid-1980s highlighted how the press manufactured public unity by making sure the population was only exposed to a narrow range of political ideas stretching from Republican to Democrat, with the Democrat usually more like an Eisenhower Republican. So long as you stayed on that little median strip, you accepted a broad range of underlying principles that never popped up in the sanitized Nerf ball version of debate that op-ed pages exhibited. The difference now, we encourage full-fledged division on that strip. We've discovered we can sell hate, and the more vituperative the rhetoric, the better. This also serves larger political purposes. So long as the public is busy hating each other and not aiming its ire at the more complex financial and political processes going on off camera, there's very little danger of anything like a popular uprising. That's not why we do what we do, but it is why we're allowed to operate this way.